Hi, my name is Vivian Wilson, the founder of Greenport, located here in Toronto, Canada. And I can't, I'm so happy to be a part of Cannabiscuits TV. Hey, everybody, y'all know we are on this episode of Cannabiscuits TV. I have this, the opportunity to meet this lovely young woman here. Name is Vivian Wilson, all the way from Toronto, Canada. Listen, I was so impressed by your story. I was so impressed by things you were able to accomplish. And so we are um, happy to have you here. I let you tell your story because you can do it better than me. But I wanted to just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you for, for a little while today. So tell us a little bit about Greenport. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Greenport actually um, became the first black owned or female independently owned cannabis retail store in Canada. It definitely wasn't the goal that I was setting out to achieve, but I, when I started um, studying the industry and seeing what was happening, uh, it was evident that this industry lacked access and representation. And so that's the reason why I decided to be a part of that, in, to be a part of this industry and to hopefully bring about the change that wasn't taking place. So um, Greenport is here uh, to create a community to make sure that people of color and those who have been predominantly impacted through the criminalization of this plant actually get an opportunity to now financially benefit from it. And, um, and we're here to hopefully by sharing my story and my journey will encourage others to also do the same and feel like they can participate in this industry and they can be a leader and they can have a voice and say in the decisions that are being made. That's very powerful. And so, as you know, it's not that it's not an easy task to do so. So, <laughs> so how, how did this start for you? You know, where, where did your cannabis journey start? You know, I grew up in Westmoreland, Jamaica, and that really is the, you know, quote unquote, haven of ganja in the country. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it wasn't as taboo as it was here in North America. So as a child growing up, we learned about the medicinal benefits of the mm -hmm. cannabis plant. This was something that, you know, was used for kids who had asthma or for general pain relief. Um, so it was a plant that I knew um, that was a rich part of the culture that we were, I was a part of. But it wasn't until coming to Canada that I realized that there was a complete distinction and I would say stigma of, of the plant. And, um, and I actually separated myself from the plant for a very long time because of that, out of fear of being stigmatized or being swept up in the criminalization of it. And that was a huge risk, even here in Toronto, for uh, people of color, predominantly Black and Indigenous, um, indigenous communities. And so that really, um, but it was, again, when I saw that the industry was taking shape here and we were becoming the first you know, G8 country to legalize mm -hmm. that I thought, you know what, Canada is, is leading the way on something. You know? <laughs> our, um, our neighbors <laughs> aren't the ones leading, um, leading the charge on this. So it was a real incentive for me to say, hey, let's, let me see what, how I can participate. And considering the history behind this plant and the fact that you know, Jamaican culture, for example, really created a stage for talking about the plant, whether it was in music, in movies, yeah, in yeah. you know in the in the community yes. and it was a shock to see that we weren't being represented in a positive way at all and and that's what really brought me here as a full circle i love it i love it you know i grew up in the new york area and yes if you wanted to get something to smoke you had to go to we call it go to the dreads go you to know, the <laughs> you had to go see the dreads so, right, right. <laughs> the dreads always had the best and and, and it's funny how and when it comes to this side, you're right. The dreads aren't represented like they should have, you know, because that's always been, they'll talk about more go to Mexico or something like that. But the dreads were always represented. It's not really a place like a New York in the States where you have a, a melting pot like, like, like New York. I mean, you have Hispanic, you have West African, you know, Jamaican, Dominican, anything you can think of is in New York. You know, you just go right. around the corner, there's one place that, but it was always go see the dreads 
for ganja, you know, right, for the right. smoke. So um, I, it's amazing that you, you mentioned that because you're right. They're putting everybody else in the forefront. But growing up, I always saw that that was just, that's what it was. That's the places you had to go if you really wanted, especially if you wanted something good and authentic. So um, that makes right. that makes a lot of sense. And you brought that to, to light. So what was your career like beforehand? What, were, what kind of career were you in before? Uh, before I was um, consulting, so working with the government uh, for, you know, launching policies, programs, technology solutions across the province. And um, that type of experience actually helped me to maneuver through a lot of the red tape that's in place within this cannabis industry. So learning how to read the regulations, knowing how to interact with the people who are trying to implement these regulations and actually being able to correct them when they're giving me wrong information on the regulations and creating you know, additional roadblocks um, definitely helped in, in uh, allowing me to get through this journey. So I was a project, I project managed you know, multi-million dollar projects across the province. And so this was just to me an, another another project in the sense of of getting it um, fully live and, and open. I love that. I love the way the pivot, you know, <laughs> using the skill set, the pivot, you know, is the pricing the same in Canada as it is in, in the States, you know, because they, they're like, First of all, they're charging a whole bunch of money. And then as they, as it becomes, as they are letting out licenses, it's like, okay, you're going to, they give eight people in the whole state a license, you know, right. that type of thing. Are they doing the same type of things in Canada? Well, for sure. In, in, you know, in different ways. So the licensing itself isn't, um, it's expensive. So it's definitely not for the regular person. So it's an expensive process. Um, one thing that they're also doing is that you must build out the facility before you can get a license. Wow. So you have to invest a significant amount of money without even knowing what the outcome is going to be. Right. And, um, they had minimized the amount of licenses that were being, um, issued to 20 a month. But the reality is most of the people that were in line were corporations. Mm -hmm. So they had leased up a bunch of different properties and then put themselves in the beginning of the line. So small business operators like myself were at the end of the line behind these large corporations. So right now you have 60% um, of the market is owned by, you know, 10 corporations or 10 entities within the, within, within the province. Um, and it could be across the country as well. So they've put in a lot of red tape, a lot of additional expenses that keeps a lot of people from fairly participating, even though they've seen that the industry is being dominated by large corporations and not the people who have been most dramatically impacted by the criminalization of the plant. Wow. Yeah. So I, um, it's funny. It was, a lot of things don't change. Right. Right. <laughs> a lot of things don't change. I was hoping I had my fingers crossed. I was hoping to hear it was a little bit better. Um, I'm definitely happy that you were able to, you know, get through the red tape and you're are the, not just the first uh, woman, but you're the first black person, period. Yeah. Uh, there's one other, okay. um, black uh retailer as well okay. i from a so i have two licenses i'm federally licensed as well um to sell medically and licensed to have a retail shop so from a federally licensed perspective i may be the first um uh, black owned um in independently licensed um federally and uh provincially to have a retailer i believe i was the second okay okay Wow, that I mean, regardless of what, it's definitely an amazing feat. And you know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what's 2021 looks like for for you guys for up there. What 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 is what, is, what is, you got planned coming into 2021? Oh, it's so hard to plan for 2021 with this pandemic going uh -huh. on. Like we are right now, the city's on lockdown. Um, so bars, restaurants, a lot of the things that would drive traffic to the store aren't open right now. So we're contending with just trying to get through 2020, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, but what we're doing right now is actually laying the seeds for 2021. So our space at Greenport, we're not a cannabis, we're not just a cannabis store, we're a community. So we're putting on events that 
that support local artists, that support especially Black female to be able to come in and share their talents or provide people, showcase what it is that they could create um, or that they are creating. So th these are the things that we're um, ensuring that people are aware of so that in 2021, um, they're able to use our space as a community space to showcase whatever it is they need our help showcasing. I love it. I love it. And, I, and you know, again, just I'm getting so much information from you, not just about this, but what's wrong with your people, um, you know, your next door? Because we don't want to close down nothing around here. <laughs> like, I'm talking about people yeah. like it's not happening around here. I don't know. But here you close down. I'm like, look, everything is still open around here. Yeah. They just literally no. say that is a, you got to have a mask on. That's it. Like nothing shut down. We have masks on um, everywhere. Uh -huh. um, we can't go into any store without a mask on. You're still supposed to have a distance. There's still a restriction as to the amount of people that can come into the retail store. So we're restricted to around 10 people at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and then bars and restaurants right now, no one can go in and eat or drink. They have to do, a t they have to do takeout. Um, and our numbers, I think, are the highest they've been ever with 1,400 yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so that's a alarming for us. I know for your, <laughs> oh <my laughs> the U.S., that's, that, <laughs> that's nothing. But for us, 1,400, we're like, oh, that, we need to stop, right? <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm glad somebody has some sense because, you know, like, I literally just got back from New York area. And as soon as I got back, I went and got a test because okay. I, it, it was just too much going on. You know, it was just entirely too much going on. Nobody wants to, they, they're selling out every ticket on the flights. So it, it's, yes, I mean, every really? airline is literally like, I'm like, oh, come on, I can't have a space between, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's nuts. So it was just too much exposure. So I said, I gotta, you know, check it out. You know, luckily, thankfully, it was negative. But right. um, I just wanted to be on top of things, you know, at that space. So just to learn that you guys actually got it right. You know, and I'm like, what are y'all doing around here? Because the numbers are way more than that, you know, and it, it is, they're not moving. They're not doing anything about it. So, you know, I, I don't know. This is, this is nuts. I don't know. I might have to come to Toronto and hang out. And, and at least I know it's cleaner. And, you, know. you still have to quarantine for 14 days, though, if you come That's in. That's fine. I'll be planning to stay for 14 days. <laughs> I'm not going to come all the way out there for, for a day or two. I'm going to hang out real good and chill and stop by Greenport. And, you know, enjoy a few things and have some fun and things like that. Nice. So, those You're always cool. welcome, of course. Thank you so much. So listen, what would you like to leave people with? Um, you know, what's a good message you would like to tell everybody? Because this, you know, you're starting to hear about what's going on in the States. A lot of places are starting to um, do recreational. Mm -hmm. um, about 11 states now. Um, there's a whole lot of legislation is going on. And, but it's a, it's a lot of people who are still feeling like they can't get involved because of the, the, the money, because of the restrictions, because of the red tape. You as somebody who beat the system, so to speak, what would you tell somebody, what word of encouragement would you give somebody who really wants to get into this industry? I would say that you don't have to always go through it in the most direct way. There are certain um, indirect ways and auxiliary services that you can provide. So one of the things is that um, I'm able to have cannabis related items in the store. So I was introduced to a black female who makes soaps and candles. So I spoke to her on how do we turn this into a cannabis related item, right? And so she um, introduced certain items in the product that were essentially hemp seed oil, essential oils, et cetera. And so she has candles and soaps that we're selling in the store, we're selling her products in the store. So that's what I mean that there are, you don't necessarily have to do it in that same direct way. There are other services that um, you could provide these stores or other products that you could potentially sell and um, be a supplier of. But if you do want to do it in the direct way, you really have to be very um, real about it, that it's not going to be easy. Even though it is so blatantly obvious that the process here in Canada is unfair, no one is doing anything about it. 
So when I was going through the application process and I was getting delays and was, in, you know, getting into certain roadblocks, I stopped talking to the person that's authorizing my license. I went to the, um, the, the premier of Ontario. I started emailing them, the CEO of the licensing authority, the attorney general, our, you know, municipality leaders. So every single time I contacted, I, you know, reached out to the licensing body about my application. Everyone was CC'd on that email. And because of that, my emails were responded to. And I got the type of results that I was looking for. So if you're going to do this, you have to be an advocate for yourself. Because if you think that they're going to just allow you to come in as easy as you would hope that they would, or that they'll just open the door and realize that, you know, things are unfair, so let's change it, it's not going to happen. And so we're still pushing, and I'll definitely still push for that to allow it to be a bit more fair for people who have been mostly impacted, but it's definitely something that you have to advocate for yourself to get done. I love it. I love it. Listen, um, I, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Definitely. Um, I believe that my, our people were going to be inspired. Uh, congratulations to you. And you know, that's, that's major, you know, salute to you, my sister. Can you let us know how to follow you on social media and on um, the website and everything like that? Well, you can, follow, you can find us at greenport.store online or on Instagram, Greenport Store, or on Facebook, Greenport Can. Okay. Yeah, we're going to put all that stuff on the screen for everybody to see it. And you guys, follow us, www.cannabiscuits.com, at cannabiscuits underscore, can underscore biscuits on all the social media platforms. And um, be able to follow this young lady here and see what she's doing. And when you go to Toronto, make sure you stop by Greenport, you know, and I, I'm sure, are you guys shipping things? No, not yet. Okay. No, <laughs> we're not able to ship, especially into the U.S. Stay tuned. Not yet. <laughs> Stay tuned. So, you know, I'm sure that it's coming as soon as this foolishness stops, <laughs> you know, so things will start opening up, but stay tuned, stay tuned. And um, I cannot get you to say on camera that you will allow us to come and interview and talk about the new updates and adjustments that happens. And as you bring on new services and things like that, you allow us to be the first to cover. Oh, of course, definitely. We we'll love that's it. What, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. You know, y'all listen, y'all, and we're going to give a round of applause because I, this is amazing. Miss Vivian Wilson, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I am Jay Haleem. You guys, subscribe to us at Cannabiscus.com. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.